I'm Jessa Jeremiah. You're watching Talk Wisconsin. We are tackling a complicated topic today as we navigate immigration policies. We're going to unpack for you the specifics about understanding immigration laws. Thankfully, we've got the expert who's joining us. This is Gloralee Lopez. She's an immigration attorney with Murphy Desmond SC, practicing this law specifically for over 20 years. So in a unique position to answer our questions today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So we're going to unpack a complex topic and it is complicated to most people because there's a lot to know. Break it down for our viewers. Help us understand the basics, if you will, to kick us off of immigration law. Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, immigration law is the legal process of allowing individuals who are not citizens of the United States to be able to come to our country. It encompasses a wide range of situations involving foreign nationals to come into the U.S. and for temporary visits or with intent to live here permanently. Now, the process of obtaining legal entry for temporary status um, all the way to achieving U.S. citizenship is complex. There's several subsets of immigration law, which uh, generally include visas, non-immigrant visas, green cards, and the process of becoming a U.S. citizen. And let's break down those three things a little bit more for our viewers here. So visas, green cards, and U.S. citizenship, of course. Walk us through the differences. Well, a visa is a travel document that allows non-citizens to travel to the U.S. A visa is issued by a U.S. consulate. A visa allows individuals to obtain non-immigrant status, which is temporary in nature. Now, individuals may come to the U.S. on visas um, for many different reasons, to visit, to uh, work, to go to school, to conduct research, to invest in businesses, etc. Now, although some visas may lead to obtaining a green card, most people just return home. Now, green cards, on the other hand, is the common term uh, for lawful permanent resident status. Um, a green card um, allow non-citizens to make the U.S. their home. As a green card holder, a person can remain here in the U.S. indefinitely, but they do not have all the rights of um, U.S. citizenship. For example, they can't vote. Um, and green card holders also must renew their green cards every 10 years. Now, U.S. citizenship is obtained, as you know, automatically if you're born here in the U.S. or in certain situations, if you're born outside of the United States to a USA citizen parent. Outside of that um, automatic citizenship, um, someone can apply to become a U.S. citizen by going through a process called naturalization. Now, there are many different requirements uh, for naturalization. For example, you need to have been a green card holder generally for five years, be at least 18 years of age, speak some um, basic English, pass a U.S. history and civics exam, and be a person of good moral character. And let's take that U.S. citizenship a step further and asking, you know, sometimes a common question people have about marrying a U.S. citizen. Is that automatic citizenship or is there more to it? Uh, that is not automatic citizenship and there's nothing automatic in immigration law. If a foreign national uh, enter the United States with a visa and marries a U.S. citizen, they must still go through the process of getting a green card first. The process can be long and it requires the couple to prove that their marriage is real, that is bona fide. Um, now, if the non-USA citizen spouse enter without a visa, the process of obtaining a green card is a little more difficult, but it's not generally impossible. But it will likely return that the person will likely require that the person return home to their home country uh, and be approved by the U.S. consulate before they can get a green card. In this type of cases, of course, having immigration law is rather important. And, you know, to further our conversation here, you know, rather big topic for those who are undocumented here living in the United States, they might fear being deported. And I want to talk a little bit about that for just a minute here before we wrap our interview. If somebody is undocumented, what legal rights do they have here? Well, those without lawful status in the U.S. should know that despite being undocumented, they have so certain rights under the U.S. Constitution. These rights include the right to remain silent, to have an attorney advise them and defend them, to have the right to refuse a search without a judicial warrant, etc. Now, if an undocumented person is detained by ICE, um, Immigration Customs Enforcement, he or she may have the right to fight their deportation in immigration court. Another situation that we have seen over the years um, is when an undocumented spouse is being subject to abuse by their spouse. Um, there is a legal process that someone can self-petition to apply for a green card without having to re rely on their abusive spouse uh, to sponsor them. 
in a different type of instance, I'm sure many people have heard in the news about young adults um, and children who qualify for DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And although DACA is not lawful status, it is not a green card, it provides that temporary security against deportation. Of course, there are many other different scenarios that require the help of an immigration lawyer to assist individuals to legalize their immigration status and obtain U.S. citizenship. And having an experienced immigration lawyer uh, is critically important in this, in this type of cases. Absolutely. And talking about experience, again, you've been practicing immigration law exclusively since 2001. So I want to encourage uh, individuals or Wisconsin families to reach out if you do have any questions. Again, a lot of complexities to unpack there. Gloria Lee Lopez with Murphy Desmond SC. Thanks so much for joining us today.